Hi, I'm Christine Resta, and I'm an endocrinologist at Maimonides Medical Center. I am board certified in endocrinology and in internal medicine. I liked endocrinology right away in medicine, even in medical school before we took care of patients when we were just doing book learning. And then when I actually did the rotation as a medical student, as an intern, it remained the thing that I liked intellectually and also as a, a style of taking care of patients. It's very cognitive. It's getting to know patients. There's not a lot of procedures. It's not invasive. It's a, I always think of it as the kinder, gentler spe subspecialty. Endocrinology is the study of hormones and their effect on the body. Most of what we do is either diabetes or thyroid related, but we also see patients with osteoporosis, with calcium disorders, pituitary disorders, adrenal disorders, and sometimes people come in with complaints and symptoms trying to figure out if they could be endocrine disorders. I would say that Diabetes and thyroid have occupied most of my time, but I like everything in endocrinology, and I'm really a general endocrinologist. It keeps things interesting. I don't do just one super, super subspecialty, and I, I see people with all different kinds of symptoms and problems. It, it keeps me thinking, and it keeps me learning all the time. I always have to relearn things that I've learned before when someone comes in with an unusual endocrine problem. My philosophy in treating patients, particularly with diabetes, is that it is the patient who will do most of the treatment and the doctor who will help guide the treatment. Diabetes is a disorder of metabolism, and we ask patients to make changes in the way they eat, in their activity level. We ask them to see many other doctors. It's really a condition that we ask people to make lifestyle changes for. And so patients really decide how much they're able to do and how much they're willing to do. And medications and insulins and, and any other way to treat the diabetes is something that we negotiate together to fit their lifestyle and to optimize their sugar control. There's big trends in diabetes and thyroid. Diabetes is a very exciting field now because new medications are coming out all the time, new classes of medications. For many years we had insulin only and beginning in the 70s we had one type of pill and there was not another new type of pill on the market till the mid-90s. And since then, there have been half a dozen new kinds of pills. So it's become much more complicated to choose what combination will work for each patient. So diabetes has really undergone a lot of changes. And there's also a lot more people with diabetes. We're seeing younger and younger patients with type 2 or what used to be called adult diabetes. Um, so type 2 diabetes has a lot of new medications, and even within the field of type 1, or what we used to call juvenile diabetes, there are many new insulins. There are new types of insulin pumps and sensors to help patients monitor their progress. So diabetes has undergone many changes in the last 20 years. Um, thyroid, there are changes in the technology. So when, when I started out as an endocrinologist in 1994, we hardly ever used sonograms to look at thyroids. We didn't use sonograms to do biopsies, and it's completely changed now. More treatment guidelines have been published to standardize the care for thyroid problems. So the, the, both of those fields have changed. And osteoporosis has also changed tremendously in the last 15 years. The, the baby boomers reached 65 this year. And osteoporosis, as a result, the, the, the rates of detection are going up, and they have more and more medications for osteoporosis. In 1994, there were no prescription medications that were FDA approved for the treatment of osteoporosis, and now we have you know, six to 10 medications to choose from. So there's really been a lot of changes. Within the field of diabetes, the way that we define diabetes has actually changed. So for many years, diabetes was diagnosed based on blood glucose values with or without symptoms. Within the last year, the American Diabetes Association now says that we can use a test called A1C to diagnose diabetes. And A1C is a test that previously we had only used to monitor patients who were already diagnosed with diabetes. And an A1C is an easier test for the patient to do. You don't have to be fasting. You don't have to drink a glucose drink and get repeat blood sugars. It's a simple blood test. And it will probably make it easier for us to detect diabetes in the population. So that's been a, 
it's an it's a, a new trick for an old test. Our practice is small. We are um, two physicians in a small office. We are a faculty practice at Maimonides, which means that we're associated with the hospital, but our office is two blocks away. It's small scale. It's not a large clinic with 30 people in the waiting room. It's a, it's a very a mom and pop feel as a practice. And patients who, new patients to the practice will get a significant amount of time, you know, usually close to an hour, to get to know them.